All right, so the uh, the next unit, as I've uh, alluded to uh, before, is uh, is about uh, transformations again. But this time for this unit, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying them to specific uh, functions with equations. So basically what we're doing here is uh, we're going to be implementing yeah, the transformations to two equations of uh, functions. All right, and the first uh, section or the first lesson is on something called radical functions. All right, so radical functions, uh, basically, they are square root functions. Okay, so radical, I'm sure you've uh, done some radical work uh, before in pre-calc, maybe 10 or 11. Uh, so anyways, radical is the same as uh, square root uh, functions. All right. So what we're going to do first here is uh, just look at the basic radical function, right, which is y equals square root of x. Um, so this is as simple as it gets, right? So y equals square root of x. There's no transformations or anything, but uh, what we're going to be doing through this lesson is uh, applying transformations to this function, all right? Now, what I've got here is the graph. I've uh, basically uh, plotted into Desmos and uh, have a printout, but uh, what I'm going to do here is just kind of do kind of like the old method where I'm going to make a table of values and just show you why this is the actual graph, all right? So if we were to create a table of values, uh, x and y, um, so, for instance, if I take x is 0, uh, the square root of 0 is still 0. Okay, so the point zero, 0 is on the graph. You can see that it's right, right there. Okay, uh, the next value for x, uh, let's say I plug in 1, square root of 1 is equal to 1. All right, so the point one, 1, which is right there, is also on the graph. Now, uh, square root of 2, if I plugged in 2, it's going to be a decimal. Um, it's like 1.4, which is like right there. But what I would do here for this table of values, just for simplicity, um, it's going to jump to four. All right, just that way, I because I know what my y values would be uh, like whole numbers here. So square root of four is two. So at four, two is right there. Okay, and let's do one more. Square root of nine is equal to three. Okay, so when I go all the way over nine, I get three. Okay, so this is uh, basically the square root function. Now, a couple things you'll notice is that um, if I was to, I'm just going to extend this out, maybe I'll close this off. If I took a negative number, right? So let's say negative one, uh, the square root of negative one, this doesn't exist okay, because uh, you can't take the square root of a negative number. Okay, so what you'll notice is over here, maybe I'll do it in the Actually, I use the highlight here. So over in this side over here, there's no there's no function, right? Because it's uh, we can't have a negative value for x. Okay, so over there there's no function. Um, now the other thing, and this is kind of a um, that I want to point out is that um, notice that there's no function down here as well. Okay, the reason for that is uh, maybe I'll use green ink here. Um, let's say for instance um, right here. Let's do four. Uh, square root of four is equal to two and only two. Okay, the square root of four is not equal to negative two. Now you might be wondering, well, if I take negative two and I multiply it by itself, I do get positive four, which is true. However, by definition, uh, the square root is always just the positive number. Okay, uh, what you might have it kind of mixed up with and this is kind of a very common uh, misunderstanding, is that if I ask you to, and so this is kind of like on the side here, if I ask you to solve something like x squared equals uh, 4, what you would do is you would take the square root of both sides, and you were probably taught to do this plus and minus, right, a plus and minus on the outside, which is correct. And then this is, therefore, what you'll get is, oops, Go back to green here. Um, then you, what you'd get is x equals plus or minus uh, two. Okay, so this is a, this is correct. This is technically correct. However, what you'll notice is that we have to put the plus and minus on the outside of the square root. Okay, so um, so basically, this is true. This is right. But if you're just asked to find the square root of a number, it's just always the positive one. Okay, this is asking something different. Actually, it's asking you what number can I square so that I get four. Right, to solve it, that's plus or minus two. But if you're just asked to straight uh, calculate the square root of four, it is always just a positive one. Okay, so that's why there is no function down here. Okay, so like at four, right, 
I do have positive two, but there's no point down here at negative two. All right, because again, the square root is always by definition just the positive number. All right, cool. So anyways, what that results in, uh, y to the square root of x is this graph here. And so it kind of goes, yeah, it's kind of like a, a half of a sideways parabola, to put it, because um, the uh, the square root function is actually the inverse or the opposite of a uh, parabola, x quadratic. But anyways, that's uh, that's something on the side. Basically, basically what I want you to get out of this is just the graph for this y equals root x, which is um, this red line here. OK, so nothing down here, nothing over here. So what else? I knew, uh, The other thing I want to point out here is the domain and range. All right. So for y equals root x, uh, let's see, let's just write up here. My domain, right, uh, if I go left to right, uh, is all my x values. So this is going to be x is greater than or equal to zero. OK, so it's uh, all my x values. There's a function from zero and to, into the positive direction. The range, if I go up and down, is from zero and up. All right, so uh, this is going to be y is greater than or equal to zero. OK, so that's your domain and range. Oops. That's your domain and range uh, for for y equals root x. Okay, so we also be we're also going to be considering domain and range for transform square root functions as well. Okay. Um, what else? Okay, and the other thing I want to point out too is that this uh, I'll use red as well. This square root function this does go on forever, okay, and it kind of tails off. But even though it tails off, it does actually go up to infinity. All right, just in a very slight, very slight compared to how far it's going to the right. All right, so you may think that this kind of just tails off, but it doesn't. It actually gets, yeah, it gets um, kind of like sh not as steep, but it still goes up to negative infinity. Or sorry, not negative, uh, positive infinity. Okay, so it still goes up forever. So that's why your range is y is greater than equal to zero. All right. Cool. So that's just an explanation of the basic radical function. So now what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be um, working with, uh, we're going to apply transformations to this one, y equals root x. Okay, so let's just scroll down to the first example. And this one here is, yeah, this is basically as complicated as it's going to get. Uh, I've thrown in a bunch of reflections, some stretches, and some shifts. All right, so um, let's just start off with... Um, so I kind of like the green color here, so let's go with green. All right, so I want to graph this y equals negative 3 root negative 2x plus 8 plus 5. All right, so just like the combined transformations from last unit, our first step is always to factor out the number in front of the x. Okay, so inside underneath the radical, I got negative 2x plus 8. What I need to do here is I need to actually factor out negative 2. So this becomes x minus 4. Okay, so always remember to factor out the number in front of the x because um, it will affect your shift left and right, okay, and then plus five. All right, now from here, uh, what I'm going to do here is just number off all of the uh, the transformations that we see. Okay, so that's the first one, second one, third, four, five, and six. So we actually have six transformations. Okay, so uh, hopefully by now you guys can read this off, all right? Uh, so the transformations, let's just write them out in words. All right, so the first one here, uh, I have a negative on the outside, so I'm going to change the sign of my y. So it, it is a reflection over the x-axis, but uh, what I'm going to list, uh, what I'm going to do here is just list off what you would actually do to each uh, coordinate. Okay, so it is a reflection over the x-axis, but we're going to change the sign of y. Uh, next up, I have a vertical expansion by a factor of 3. Um, so you're going to multiply your y by 3. Uh, the third one here, again, I got another negative sign. So this is, means that I'm going to change the sign of my x this time, All right, which is a reflection over the y-axis. Uh, number 4 is uh this, okay so remember if it's to the x it's always the reciprocal so this is a horizontal compression by one half okay, so it's always the reciprocal um and then i got to shift right four 
and then I'm going to shift it up five. All right, so these are the six transformations that we can read off um, before we compare this to y equals root x. Okay, so these are all the transformations. Now, since I got multiple transformations, what I want to do now is I'm going to use the mapping notation. All right, so I'm going to write out mapping notation. Um, so, uh, yeah, so let's just scroll this down a bit. All right, so mapping notation. All right, so the point X, Y becomes, all right, so what affects my X are these ones here. Okay, so these ones are uh, three, four, and five. Okay, so I'm gonna change the sign of X and I wanna horizontally compress it by a half. So that would mean that I'm gonna take negative X and divide it by two. All right, and then shift it right four means I have to add four. And then for my Y variable, which is these two, the first two and the, and the last one there, uh, change the sign of Y, multiply by three, so negative three Y, and then up five, so I'm gonna add five. All right, so this is the mapping notation uh, for, this, uh, for this example. And again, we are uh, converting uh, points that are on Y equals root X, all right? So, uh, so going back to y equals root x, which is, I scroll up, uh, this, these points here, this table of values, uh, I'm going to just plug in these points in for x and y, and then it should give me the, the new, the new, new points on this version. Okay, so, um, so we'll start off with, uh, so maybe I'll do this one second here. Okay, so y equals root x, so on this function, I'm going to start off with the, the, what they call the endpoint, which is zero, zero. Okay, that's, that's where it starts. When I sub that in, um, let's see what we get here. So negative, let's just use a different color for me, sub it in. So zero, oops, I don't know. And let's move that, it's green. All right, so negative zero uh, over two plus four and then negative three times zero plus five. All right, so again, the point zero, zero is on y equals root x. When I plug it into the mapping notation, uh, we get this here. So when I work it out, like this I'm just gonna do in my head here. So negative zero divided by two is zero, zero plus four is four. And then negative three times zero again is zero, plus five is five. Okay, so the zero, zero becomes um, four, five. All right, next up, uh, let's go with one, one. Okay, so this is another point that's on y equals root x, sub that in. Uh, so negative one over two. Plus four. And I'm going to have negative three times one plus five. And that is equal to, all right, so negative one half plus four is positive 3.5. And since I'm graphing it, I'm just going to use, uh, put it right down as a decimal. All right, so um, yeah, so that's negative. Uh, negative 0.5 plus 4 is 3.5. Now this one over here, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus 5 is positive 2. Okay, cool, cool. And let's just do one more here. So the other point I used was 4, 2. So when I plug that in, let's see what we get here. So negative uh, 4 over 2. Uh, plus four, and then negative three times two plus five. All right, so let's see what that's equal to. Um, so that's negative two plus four is positive two, and then negative three times two is negative six, plus five is negative one. All right, so let me just make sure I got that right. I think I did, yep. All right, 
So these three points here are now on this uh, transform function. So what I'm going to do here is just plot those onto this graph. So I'm going to start with four, five, which is right there. Uh, so that's my new endpoint. Uh, then I got 3.5 and 2. So 3.5 and 2 is right here. And then 2, negative 1. So 2, negative 1 is right there. All right, so those are the three points. We could go on. I could plug in 9, 4, or sorry, 9, 3. You get what that is. Uh, but generally, uh, three points is enough because we, now we'll get kind of a general idea of how the curve looks like, right? So how the function looks like. So again, this is my endpoint. If I connect them up, I'm going to do my best here to do that. Oh, that's not bad. But it looks something like this. Okay. So there's the graph. Um, so yeah so and if you look at what if the interpretation right so there are double reflections so uh there's two reflections right so if y equals just do a, I'll use a different color uh so like if this is the graph of y equals root x this is the one we started off with uh if i reflect it twice it's going to go in let's go with the, uh, uh, it can go it's if I reflect it once over the it's going to go here but then if I reflect it again it's going to end up in this direction right which is what we got here okay so we have a double reflection uh, you can see that it's been uh, vertically expanded by three but then horizontally compressed okay so maybe I'll verbally go through that so vertical expansion means that instead of going over one down one it's gone over one down three but it's also been compressed by a half so instead of actually going over one it's actually just gone over a half so this is a true point right here so that's just kind of like if you kind of think through the two stretches uh, you can see that this point here makes sense okay and then the third one or the other thing were the shifts so right four and up five so that gives us that starting point there okay so um you could actually possibly without doing all these transformations, just map notation, if you thought through these transformations and kind of came up with the next point, uh, that could make sense. But this, I guess this method though, the mapping notation, plugging them in, uh, it's just kind of like a more solid, solid way of uh, getting those points. All right, um, cool. All right, so that is that uh, example. All right, so given the equation, and this is kind of as complicated as it gets because you've got a bunch of uh, reflections and shifts and stretches, all right? All right, cool. So let's go on to the next example here. Um, next up here, what is the domain and range of y equals 3, negative 5, x minus 10, minus 1? OK, so for this one here, I'm not actually going to have to find new points or anything. What I want to do, out though, is I want to kind of sketch, sketch how this graph is going to look like in terms of these endpoints. Now, before we do that, again, the first step is still the same, where I have to factor out the negative 5. Okay, so I'm going to get x plus 2 here, um, and then minus 1 on the outside. Okay, so um, key things when it comes to domain and range, um, the stretches actually don't really affect domain and range. The only thing that you're really concerned about is the reflections and the shifts. Okay, the reason the stretches don't matter is because it's not going to affect um, kind of your starting points. Uh, in terms of the endpoint, okay, so these two will change your endpoint. So where the function kind of starts. Um, the reflections, the reason you can, or sorry, not the reflections, the, uh, the stretches, the reason you can ex uh, ignore them in terms of domain range is because whether you stretch it one way or the other, it's not, uh, the endpoint is the key starting point and uh, the stretches themselves will not change your domain range, okay. But the reflection also, is uh, important. So this one means that we're going to reflect over the y-axis. Okay, so um, so our endpoint here is at negative 2, negative 1, okay, because we've shifted a left 2 and up down 1, and so there's a reflection over the y-axis, right? So if I wanted to sketch this, um, let's go with purple, um, it's going to look like this. All right, so my endpoint is at negative 2, negative 1, which is right there. And then the other key thing is you want to figure out which direction uh, this uh, this function goes. Right? So if uh, if I was to draw up uh, y equals root x, remember that this one goes in this direction. Now if I reflect it over the y-axis, 
Uh, so this axis here, then the reflected function should go in this direction. OK, so if I apply that to um, this transform function uh, from here, this endpoint, it's going to go up and to the left. OK, so that's just a rough sketch, but that's all we need in terms of determining the domain and range. OK, so the domain, if we just look at the sketch, see that the domain is x is less than net or equal to negative 2. OK, because uh, again, this is uh, negative 2 for your x, and it goes in that direction. And the range is y is uh, greater than or equal to negative 1. OK, so when it comes to this question, yeah, we don't have to do the mapping notation, get new points or anything like that. All we need is the uh, the endpoint, okay, so where to start, and then which direction this, uh, this, uh, this uh, function goes. So since it's a reflection over the y-axis, we know that it goes in this direction. Okay. Cool. All right, next up, uh, what horizontal stretch can you apply to y equals root x to get the same graph as y equals 3 root x and show it algebraically? All right, so first thing you're probably wondering is what is it asking? Um, so this part here, y equals 3 root x, we can interpret this, interpret this as a vertical expansion by three. Okay. Now, when you vertically expand a, a, a radical function, um, so you know what, I'm going to just do a kind of a sketch here. So let's just say this is by drawing a y equals root x. If I wanted to vertically expand this by a factor of three, this means that it's being uh, you know, vertically stretched in the upward direction. So, and again, this is just a sketch, but it might look something like this. Okay. Now, the other thing though, is that if I can look at this in a different way, all right, I, instead of being a vertical stretch, perhaps you can also see that it's a horizontal compression. Right, it goes from here to here. Right, so it's being compressed horizontally. Okay, um, so hopefully you guys can see that or realize that. So this is a vertical expansion if you write it off this way. However, um, it's also if you look at the graph, a horizontal compression. All right, and there is an equivalent function that we can do or that we can look at so that we get the exact same graph. All right, um, so. The way we do this is uh, through algebra, uh, algebraically, we can prove this. Okay, so y equals 3 root x is the one that we're working with, but I want to write it in the form y equals root, uh, and they use the variable b, so there's some number there, b, x. Okay, and uh, so this takes a little bit of knowledge of uh, radicals and uh, radical rules and so on. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so if I start off with y equals 3 root x, this is the same as y equals, 3 is the same as the square root of 9, right? So square root of 9 times the square root of x. All right. All right, so sorry about that. Um, Okay, so, um, so, all right, so y equals square root of 9 times square root of x. Uh, so this is equal to, if I multiply two radicals together, y equals root 9x. Okay, uh, so if we interpret this, right, uh, this would be the same as a horizontal compression. by one over nine, okay. Uh, so yeah, so a vertical expansion to uh, one of these radical functions it, by three is the same as a horizontal compression by nine. And what I'm gonna do now is actually, I'm just gonna show you that on Desmos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to uh, graph y equals three root x, and I'm also gonna graph y equals root nine x. And what you'll see is that it's actually the exact same uh, graph. Okay, so y equals 3 root 
x. Okay, it looks like that. So it's in blue. And then let's graph y equals square root of 9x. Okay, so you'll see that, it, yeah, so it, it does overlap it uh, exactly. Okay, so these are the two, these two graphs are the exact same things. Um, so this works for the, yes, just for these radical functions. All right, so again, if I click that one off, you'll see that it turns blue. All right, it's the exact same thing. All right. Cool. All right, so let's go on to the next one here. I've got a couple more. All right, so for examples four and five, so the last two examples, uh, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going in the kind of like the other direction where we're given the, uh, uh, the graph of a function or details of the radical function, and we need to come up with the equation. All right, so with this time we're finding the equation. All right, so uh, let's just look at this one here. So I have this graph. Um, where we want to start off with is uh, actually right here, the, the end point. All right, so the end point will give us the shifts. Okay, so the end point here is at negative 2, negative 1. Okay, now next up, uh, let's go Let's look for any reflections. This is the first one. Next up, uh, reflections. Uh, you can see that it's, if this is, uh, again, the graph of y equals root x, you can see that it's been reflected uh, this way. Right? So it goes in this direction. So in, in other words, there's a reflection over the x-axis. All right. Uh, so this means that we got to change the sign of y. All right. And the third thing we want to look for is any stretches. Now, in that very first example, if I scroll it back up, um, there were uh, basically oh, where is it coming? Uh, there's two. Uh, there's two uh, stretches, right? We had the the number two here, number four here, vertical expansion, horizontal compression. Now, when it comes to these questions, uh, basically what we're going to do is we just want to look at, uh, we can basically just uh, get away with just doing one stretch, one type of stretch, either horizontally or vertically. Um, we don't actually have to need to combine them either. Yeah. So if you look here, um, we can interpret this as a vertical compression. Right. If I go over one, I don't quite go down one, uh, but it's probably easier to see that it's a consider this point right here that when I go down one, I go over two. So it's much easier to interpret as a horizontal. Expansion. Uh, by two. OK, so. Um, so with that being said, we can apply these or plug this into the equation, apply it to y equals root x, and get our new one. All right. So, um, so we're going to do the shifts last. Um, so if I take all this together, uh, basically I have y equals. So I want to change the sign of my y, so the negative signs on the outside. Um, I have a horizontal, so inside the brackets, horizontal expansion by two, which means that my coefficient in front of the x is the reciprocal, one half, and then I'm going to shift it. Uh, left two, so this is going to be x plus two in here, and then down one minus one. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I did go through this step fairly quickly, but hopefully by now you guys are comfortable with the uh, transformations and just going from transformations and plugging them to the uh, the equations themselves. Okay, so again, um, yeah, shift left, uh, shift left two, down one. So again, plus x plus two and negative one. We have a reflection over the x-axis, change the sign of y, so negative on the outside, and horizontal expansion by two, so one half in front of the x, because again, we put the reciprocals when it comes to horizontal uh, expansions and compressions. All right, cool. And let's just do this last one here. Okay, so we wanted to determine the equation of a uh, radical function with its endpoint at three, four, and an x-intercept of negative two. All right, so whenever you're kind of given these, this information uh, uh, in writing and not given the graph, uh, what we need to do here is actually sketch the graph, see what happens, because that will give us an idea of how the, uh, how, how the reflections look. All right, so we can't really assume, um, uh, well, sorry, we need to find out the reflections, okay? And the only way to do that is actually to sketch, sketch the graph, all right? So what do we do first here? 
they sketch it out. So the endpoint is at three, four. Three, four, which is here. And then it says an X intercept of negative two, which is here. Okay. So that means that this function needs to, if I were to sketch it, let's just do one thing here. It'll look something like this. Okay. Now, if I compare that to, again, the base function y equals root x, which goes in this direction, you can actually see that there are two reflections, right? It's got to get reflected this way and then reflected this way. Right? So if I double reflect it, it's going to go in the correct direction. Okay. So right away, we have two reflections. Okay. So, um, yeah. So two reflections. I'll call it a double reflection. All right, so if I was to apply that into the uh, kind of like set up the graph or set, sorry, set up the equation, I'm going to get y equals, all right, I'm going to stick a negative sign outside. Now, in terms of the horizontal stretch or vertical stretch, uh, you can solve for either. So I'm just going to put an a variable on the outside. Therefore, I have the square root, and then I also have a negative on the inside, all right, because again, the double reflection. And then uh, my shift, so given the endpoint, I know my, I'm going to be shifting it right three, so that inside the brackets here, this has to be x minus three, and then up four, so there's a plus four. Okay, so this is how we set up the equation um, with the information that's given. Now, we still need to figure out what the vertical stretch is, okay? So, to do that, and this is the case for all um, equations when you're trying to find an equation, if you know a point that's on the graph, you can always plug it in for x and y. Okay. Now, the thing is, we can't actually use the endpoint okay, because uh, then we'll have an equation that we can't actually solve for. So what we have to do is you have to use the other point given, which is the, the x-intercept. Okay. So, um, so we're going to plug in. The point zero negative two, all right, into this um, this equation, all right. So, um, so if I do that, I'm just using a different color here for zero negative two. Um, actually, just to make it a little bit clearer, I just write that in green right here. So, I'm going to plug in zero negative two since I, that's my x-intercept, and I know that's a point on the on the graph. So for y, let's plug in negative two. Uh, equals and then negative a root negative bracket and let's plug in zero for x. Okay. All right. And what we need to do now is just solve for a. And once we solve for a, that will give us the um, the vertical stretch. Okay. All right. So if I do that, negative two equals uh, negative a square root. All right, so negative, uh, negative three plus four. All right, so negative two equals negative a square root of, so the negative cancel, negative points cancel, negative signs cancel, so that becomes square root three plus four. Now, what you'll also notice before I go on is that, yeah, if I didn't look at the reflections and didn't notice this double reflection, then I would not have known to put a negative sign there. You know, if I, this negative sign was missing, then this thing would be unsolvable, right? So that's the other thing is, that's the other reason why it's key to um, to draw it first, first, is to check out the reflections because you want the correct negative signs. Okay, so underneath the square root sign here, all right, these two negative signs cancel, it becomes positive three. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is solve for A. So I'm gonna move the four over to this side. So that's minus four and we get negative six equals negative a times root three. Uh, divide both sides by negative root three. Negative root three. So these cancel. Let's use uh, red here. Okay, so this cancels with this, this negative sign cancels with that. So this is a, right? So a is equal to positive six over root three. Um, now I could rationalize the denominator, which I think you guys did in pre-calc 11. Yeah. Um, but again, it's not, not necessary. All right. 
Um, Actually, but just to be technically correct, I will rationalize the denominator. So if you guys remember from pre-calc 11, whenever you have a radical on the bottom, you just basically multiply the top and bottom by that radical. Okay, so this is going to be 6 root 3 up top. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. And so this simplifies. The 6 and this 3 cancel, cancel to 2 over 1, so that's 2 root 3. Okay, so therefore the equation, uh, basically what we're trying to find here, Going back to here, if I plug it in here for A, uh, I get Y equals, my final answer, Y equals uh, negative 2 root 3 uh, times square root of negative uh, X minus 3 plus 4. Now, the other thing here now, you'll notice that I do have two radicals. Uh, what we can do now, and what we actually should do, is combine these two radicals, right? just like I did in that previous example. So this would be y equals negative two square root, right? and the three goes into the back into the radical. So negative three x minus three plus four. Okay. So as it turns out, actually, even though we oops, even though we solve for uh, just a in our steps here, uh, the final answer actually does combine a um, vertical expansion with a horizontal compression, right? If, I, if you were to interpret that, right? But the two negative signs are important there, right? So a double reflection, shifting a right three and um, and uh, a four, all right? Now, just as a final step in this, uh, what I'm gonna do, and it's always a good idea to check your answers, is I'm going to punch this, what we came up with, into the, um, into Desmos and just see that, uh, that it is uh, correct. All right. All right. So let's uh, do that. So y equals so negative. I've already forgotten. Negative two, negative three. So negative two square root uh, negative three bracket x. Oops, I don't want to open my mail. <laughs> Sorry about that. What was that? Um, negative three x minus three plus four. Okay. Yeah. So let's see what we got here. And let's make sure this function, this graph here is what was described. So let's just scroll to the top. So yeah, endpoint 3, 4, x intercept of negative 2. All right. So endpoint is 3, 4, which is right there. And uh, x, y intercept of negative 2. All right. Oh boy. <laughs> I just realized something. Um, I uh, did this wrong, because right. this would be a, like y intercept of negative two. So I actually had the negative two and the zero backwards here. Uh, yeah. All right. So simple, simple fix here. I'm just going to change this to y. <laughs> there we go. And it's perfect. All right. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. All right. So it's a y intercept of zero, negative two would be plugging in this point, right? If I did it originally. X intercept, I would be plugging negative two zero. Now, yeah, uh, theoretically the steps are the same. Um, it's just that these the negative two would and the zero would in this step here would be flip flopped if I had done it correctly or how I had initially doing it. But um, I don't really feel like doing it over again. So uh, basically that's the way around it. I just switched the, the, to a minor step. Okay, but the uh, the concept's still the same. All right. All right, cool. So that's that. That's a fairly long lesson. I am aware. Of. So um, again, uh, if you have any questions, please email me. Let me know, and I'll be uh, be happy to uh, help you guys out. Cheers.